in this session i will be discussing wound healing that is repair and regeneration so before studying the steps of repair and regeneration let's have a look on the anatomy of the skin we know in the skin there are three layers the outermost is the epidermis you can see this is epidermis just below the epidermis there is dermis so you can see this one is dermis and below to the dermis there is subcutaneous tissue right so let's talk about the outermost epidermis in the epidermis there are five thin layers so they are stratum basale stratum spinosum stratum granulosum stratum lucidum and stratum corneum these are the five layers in sequence right in these five layers there are two types of cells melanocytes and keratinocytes melanocytes are the cell which secrete melanin as a pigment right which it is a pigment which gives color to the skin and protects the skin from the damaging effects of the uv light and keratinocytes are the cell which produce keratin right keratin is a water repellent protein makes the epidermis tough and protective quality so that is the two types of cells now just below the epidermis there is dermis inside the dermis there are multiple collagen elastic fibers nerve fibers blood vessels sweat glands sebaceous glands hair follicles all these are present in dermis and just below the dermis there is subcutaneous tissue made up of fat so that is the subcutaneous tissue now if you got the anatomy of the skin let's start healing what is healing can you define healing healing is body's response to injury in attempt to restore the normal structure and function of the skin so whenever there is a injury on the skin just suppose on the skin there is any injury so body's ability or body's response to restore the normal structure and function of skin is known as healing now the main thing is that healing is similar in all tissue irrespective of the tissue it's similar in all tissue and it's independent on the mode of the injury whether it is a blunt injury whether it is a sharp injury deep injury it's same in all so uh, let's come on healing now there are two processes involved in healing the repair and regeneration so you should be able to understand the difference between repair and regeneration so what is the difference between repair and regeneration now regeneration in regeneration the parenchyma replaced by parenchymal cells of the same type but in repair the parenchyma which is lost it is replaced by fibrous tissue so in regeneration restoration of the normal structure function and structure is possible but in repair restoration of normal shape and function is not possible and in repair ultimately scar is formed let me show you so can you see this is a normal this is a normal structure this is a normal structure now if there is injury if the injury is superficial if the injury is superficial so whatever cell lost from this area it is replaced by the same cells it is replaced by the same cells so again the same structure is resumed the same structure and function is restored in regeneration because the injury is very superficial so whatever cells are lost in this injury they are replaced by the same type of the cells you got my point yes now see on the contrary see the repair this one is regeneration on the contrary you see the repair what is happening in the repair the injury is very deep in repair the injury is very deep so here whatever cells are lost they will never come again they will never be restored so instead of that the collagen scar will be coming so the end result here is scar and it cannot restore the normal structure and function again ever so that is the difference between regeneration and repair so can you tell me the difference in regeneration the injury is superficial in repair the injury is deep you can see in regeneration the lost cell are replaced by same type of cell so normal structure and function is again restored but in repair the cells which are lost they are never restored they are replaced by scar the end result is collagen scar and the normal structure and function is never restored so that is the difference between regeneration and repair so i will be telling you i will discuss the repair in detail i will discuss the steps of the repair in detail let's start the repair what is repair as i have told you in repair there is replacement of the injured tissue by fibrous tissue that is scar right it is not the same tissue coming instead of that tissue which is lost instead of that we will get fibrous tissue at the end so that is known as repair so let me teach you the steps in the repair there are three steps in repair you have to study one by one there are three phases actually the first phase is inflammatory phase the second phase is proliferative phase and the third phase is maturation phase in the first phase there are two things which will happen clot formation and inflammation that's why known as inflammatory phase in the proliferative phase two things will take takes place one by one uh, sorry three things will take place so epithelialization fibroplasia and angiogenesis 
and the end result of second step is granulation tissue and in the third step the end result is scar so let's start these steps one by one so all these three steps are shown in this diagram i will show you this diagram again in the end so this is inflammatory phase this is proliferative phase and this is maturation phase right the three steps the three diagrams are shown to you let's start phase number one inflammatory phase as soon as injury occurs just suppose i am having a cut over here a injury is over, over here so immediately for the first from day one to day three it will be inflammatory phase so can you see this diagram can you see these sketch diagrams so in this sketch diagram see this is epidermis just below the epidermis this is complete dermis this is complete dermis this one so epidermis and dermis can, where is the injury can you note where is the injury I guess you all can see this is the injured area. This is the injured area. Now, as soon as the injury takes place, as soon as the injury takes place, there is clot formation. There is clot formation. So, bleeding occurs and because of the bleeding, the clot is formed. The platelet clot is formed in that injured area. You got it. Now, after that, the inflammation occurs. So, we have blood vessels here. Now, in the dermis, these are the blood vessels. Can you appreciate the blood vessels that we mark? These all are the blood vessels in the dermis. From the blood vessels, the neutrophils will leak out. Can you see in the injured area, these all cells are neutrophil. If you can see, if you can zoom it out and see, all these are multilobated cells. These all are neutrophils. And gradually, the neutrophils are replaced by macrophages. Now, in this diagram, you can see all the cells are macrophages. The nucleus is not multilobated. The nucleus is mononuclear. So, first, neutrophils are there, followed by macrophages are there. It's clearly visible in the diagram. So, first, platelet clot followed by neutrophils, followed by macrophages. This is inflammatory phase. So now read what is happening in inflammatory uh, phase, you tell me. So within the seconds of the injury, epinephrine and norepinephrine will come in the role. That is sympathetic stimulation will come in the role. It will cause vasoconstriction. Because of the vasoconstriction, the endothelial cell will retract and subendothelial tissue will be exposed. So platelet adhesion, activation, aggregation, ultimately platelet clot is formed, the primary clot which results in formation of the secondary clot that is fibrin clot, right? So ultimately this clot is formed. So I told you the steps how the clot is formed inside the injured area because of platelet adhesion, activation, aggregation. So first a primary clot is formed, then a secondary clot is formed. Simultaneously, first release of the neutrophils are there and which is followed by the macrophages which leads to inflammation. So two things happening simultaneously. On one end, there is hemostasis that is clot formation on other end there is inflammation so these are the two things which takes place in first first phase that is inflammatory phase inflammatory phase me there are two things number one hemostasis number two inflammation so there you can see the diagrams also here also in this image you can see you can see this is the injured area inside the injured area first a clot is formed after the formation of the clot you can see these are the neutrophils and after that these are the macrophages so the clot with neutrophil with macrophage this is phase one so in phase one inflammatory phase two things happened the clot formation and inflammation inflammation of neutrophil followed by macrophage that's it coming on stage two or phase two the proliferative phase here three things takes place one by one the first is the epithelialization the second is the fibroplasia and third is the angiogenesis let's talk about them one by one from day 2 to 3 weeks, this will happen. And the end result is the granulation tissue. The end result is the granulation tissue. So what is epithelialization? Let me show you in this diagram all these three things. Can you see here? In this diagram, the epithelium is moving from here and moving from here and meeting at the center. This area was injured now. So epithelium was, was lost. But the lost epithelium is coming from both sides and meeting at the center. That is known as epithelialization. So proliferation of the epithelial cells, the proliferation and migration of the epithelial cells from both sides to meet at the center, to cross the midline, to meet at the center. This is epithelialization, right? Now, the first cells were the neutrophils followed by macrophages. Now, the next cells which will come are the fibroblast. Can you see the spindle-shaped fibroblast? Once the fibroblast will come, they start forming collagen. They start forming collagen. This is known as fibrogenesis. So first epithelialization is there in which the both the epithelium are meeting with each other. Then fibrogenesis is there in which after macrophages fibroblast will come and fibroblast will start forming collagen. And lastly the third thing is angiogenesis. Can you see here blood vessels? These are the old blood vessels. 
ओल्ड ब्लड वेसल्स आर गिविंग राइज टू न्यू ब्लड वेसल्स न्यू बर्ड्स दे आर गोइंग इन साइड सो फॉर्मेशन ऑफ न्यू ब्लड वेसल्स इज नोन एज एंजियोजेनेस सो थ्री थिंग्स आर टेकिंग प्लेस इपिथिलेशन इज टेकिंग प्लेस राइट फाइब्रोजेनेसिस इज टेकिंग प्लेस राइट एंड एंजियोजेनेसिस इज टेकिंग प्लेस एंड द एंड रिजल्ट ऑफ ऑल ऑफ दीज इज ग्रेनुलेशन टिश्यू येस so epithelialization in which epidermal cells they move each other each towards each other the, the keratinocytes are the main cell they will detach migrate proliferate differentiate and stratify and they will meet at the center right in fibrogenesis first neutrophils are there then macrophages are there and now fibroblasts are there fibroblasts will start forming collagen which is randomly randomly uh, laid down so you can see the three things here and lastly angiogenesis is the formation of the new blood vessel for the formation of new blood vessel the most important stimulant is the egf that is vascular endothelial growth factor this is how the new blood vessel is formed from the old one you can see this is a old blood vessel from which this bud is arising and it gives rise to the new blood vessel that is angiogenesis so finally the end product the end product here is the granulation tissue of the step 2 so we can see this is the granulation tissue here right so here you can see this is formed this is granulation tissue this is granulation tissue so we are done with step 1 we are done with step 2 and now it's lastly the phase 3 the phase 3 is the maturation phase in the maturation phase it start from 3 week onwards till 2 years the longest phase the longest phase here fibroblast will also leave the wound first neutrophil were coming they were going then macrophage are coming they are going then fibroblast are coming and now they are also going so only collagen is present only collagen is present everything is gone only collagen is present but in a organized matrix and the tensile strength of the wound go on increasing 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 up to one year it will be maximum but never 100% so can you see this is scar the end result of the maturation phase is the scar here we can see only collagen we can see fibroblast yet but they will also disappear so at the end only collagen that is scar so the tensile strength is never 100% no it will never maximum it will be 80% after 3 months after 3 months so end product here is the scar so you can see here the three steps the three steps so the first step this one is clot along with inflammation this one is granulation tissue and this one is scar so these are the three phases we are done we are done with the three phases the steps of the wound healing right so let me revise you the steps in the inflammatory phase there is clot formation so platelet will come the primary clot will be formed and then fibrin fibrin fibrinogen or fibrin will come and form the secondary clot it is followed by neutrophil and it is followed by macrophages that is inflammation that is the first phase inflammatory phase then in proliferative phase three things takes place simultaneously the epithelialization where both epithelium come towards each other and meet in the center fibrogenesis where spindle shaped are formed spindle shaped fibroblast will come and they will start laying down collagen and lastly angiogenesis that is formation of new blood vessel from the old one lastly there is maturation phase that is scar formation so the end result is the scar that's it the end result is a scar now before ending this topic let me tell you healing in the skin wounds in the skin wounds the healing takes place by two mechanism healing by primary intention or primary union and healing by secondary intention or secondary union what do you mean by that you can see the two diagrams here okay in the primary union you can see the first diagram is of primary union the injury is small and here the injury is superficial but a big one right so here a little granulation tissue is formed at the end and here abundant granulation tissue is formed at the end so this one is the primary this one is the secondary let me tell you the differences so the primary union takes place in the wounds where there is a clean wound you know a small wound is there can you see a small clean wound like a surgical wound the surgical incision is there but here the wound is unclean unclean here it is uninfected here the wound is infected here margins are surgical clean here margins are irregular here sutures are used here sutures are not used so here scanty granulation tissue is formed at the end you can see the granulation tissue it's very scanty and here abundant granulation tissue is formed because here the margins are laid together with the help of with the help of sutures here we have done the suturing but here there is no suturing right so here here exuberant granulation tissue is formed so at the end if you see this this one is very neat from outside and this one is dirty 
un untidy from outside it's it's not good because of abundant granulation tissue this one is neat this one is contracted right this is infrequent this is frequent you got my point so these are the two types of you can say the two types of healing the primary union the secondary union so basically the injury is different here the injury is clean with uh, clean margins here the injury is uh, very uh, wide you can say it's a big injury the dirty injury with infection and the margins are not clean here we use the suture here we don't use the suture so here little granulation tissue with neat neat scar and here dirty or untidy granulation tissue with abundant scar so that's all about the healing and uh, regeneration i hope you got the repair regeneration healing all about it or try solving mcqs on this topic you will be so able to solve all the mcqs based on that thank you